they were truly angry. Truly angry young men. I was born in L.A. and I, I led, I guess, a pretty boring life. It was just, you know, your basic everyday thing. And in ninth grade, my parents bought me a guitar for Christmas because I was really interested in music and guitar playing and stuff. And I was looking around for different other, you know, other players to play with, like music musicians. And um, I guess the time went down. I met Jerry in high school, and I told him I liked to play the guitar too. But I was really into Megadeth, you know, Metallica, Pantera, you know, and you know, I really, really fast heavy metal bands. You know, I didn't know that many heavy metal bands at the time. I was more interested in like a grunger sound, like Nirvana, the Stone Temple Pilots, or Soundgarden. And um, I really didn't know that many heavy metal bands, because like the first time Dan played Master of Puppets by Metallica, I was just literally just blown away. It was so awesome. Jerry and I would jam like once or twice a week, and through music and playing music, our friendship became uh, real stronger. We were friends up to high school and college. I used to work in this music store, and sometimes this guy would come in and buy like drumsticks and other drum stuff and that. And uh, the one day I asked him, I said, you in a band, man? He goes, yeah. I said, what kind of music do you play? He goes, well, I like to... His band was like a punk cover band. He used to play like Misfits and No Effects and other punk music and stuff. So he said, so what kind of music do you like? And I said, I was into like Metallica and other metal band stuff. And he kind of looked at me for a minute and then he goes, I think he told me to like off or something because he just left the store. And you know, from the, from the start, I really didn't like this guy. I met Jerry in a record store, but before I was in minor setback, I was in a band called uh, what was it called so long ago? Cowboys and Spiders, I think it was. It was really stupid. It, was, it didn't really work out right the way I wanted it to. Like, it was kind of like a punk cover band. But that wasn't really what I was aiming for, so I quit that and got a day job at doing dishes. And that was a rough time. I had to find another band. I, I really wanted to do my dream. So I was looking around for flyers, like, with auditions. So that's when I found the flyer to audition for Minor Setback. I always, I always wanted to start a band with Jerry, but it was tough because we couldn't find a drummer good enough to fit the band. So in 91, me and Jerry would posted flyers all over LA you know, to, to audition drummers. So in my house, like only 10 guys showed up. What the hell, man? Five of them were just looking for direction, right? Stupid ass tourists. Anyways, the other five that auditioned, you know, they were all right, you know, except for one. You know, his name was Ryan. And, you know, he, he was just going crazy on the drum, you know, doing this like this two-minute drum solo. And you know, and, and me and Jerry just looked at each other, you know, and thought, this is the guy. I gotta tell Ryan he's in the back. You know, out of all the people who tried out, he made it. And I noticed he was the same guy who told me to up in the record store. So I go up to him and I say, hey, weren't you that guy? You know, I thought it was you. I mean. We've hated each other since that day, and now we're like best friends. We called the band Minor Setback, and we started playing these clubs that were completely sold out. It was amazing. We started putting out flyers all over LA, like anywhere we could possibly be, at any venue, we started putting stuff up. It was an amazing turnout. We had such a huge fan base. I mean, so many people wanted to hear our music, they wanted to buy it, so we went to Dan's house one day and we recorded this little crappy demo. It was on this little junky recorder that we had. And it sounded so horrible. I mean, it was nothing compared to our live sound at all, but people wanted to buy it. It was just like crazy. There's like people coming in like, hey, you're a guy from Minor Step Back. I wonder what you sound like. So we had our CD table set up and it was like, it was just crazy. People are just waiting to see us play. What are you looking at? Yeah, I used to 
I used to go to shows all the time. I never really paid attention to any bands, you know. And one day I went by the club. I heard the music. It was just so good. I thought a setback was playing, so I hopped into there. I was beating up some kids, and then I just stopped. I looked at the stage, you know, and it was right in a setback. They were just so good. It was beautiful. Finally got an offer from the record company Atlantic. I think it was, I think it was uh, June 92, I think, you know. But now we had to record an album. Yeah, doing our first album was so tough because we weren't used to doing so much work before. We were just used to playing our songs, and that was it. We'd go off the stage, that was it. We, didn't, we weren't used to doing any of this stuff. So we weren't used to like going into the studio, mixing and editing for hours and hours. It was just crazy. <laughs> Everybody hated each other. I mean, Dan wanted to be this really fast-paced metal album, and Ryan wanted to be this, you know, punk record. And all I wanted to be was just this, you know, the, an album that a set with a sound no one has heard before. It took six weeks to make the record, a long six weeks, but we got it done. We all agreed for it to be a color album, something as classic as the Beatles' White album, and as you know, current as the, you know, the Metallica's Black album. The Gray. Where's the shit? I'll break your stuff! I'll break your stuff! The Grey album, our album, uh, debuted in April 93, number one on the charts. Now, for some, from, for some hardly together little band, you know, it was just unbelievable. Yeah. 